My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about dividend reinvestment calculators. I'm gonna walk you through how I use a dividend reinvestment calculator, some different models and different things that I think about, and why dividend reinvestment calculators are so important if you're a dividend investor. Predicting your time horizon, working backwards, all of that stuff is so, so incredibly important. For those of you that follow the channel, you know that I just, uh, my, with my wife and I, we, we just barely got back from Germany. Uh, it's good to be back home. Unfortunately, it's like 100 degrees every single day here in Austin. Uh, so not so excited about that. We're just like only going outside in the mornings at night. We're kind of, it's kind of crazy. I don't know about where you're all at, but it is so, so hot here. I just barely had ice cream. I feel like an alcoholic, right? You know, when you drink alcohol in the morning before noon, I just had an ice cream before noon. So uh, yeah, it's really hot. Um, but uh, yeah, so not so so crazy updates from my end um my wife and i we're still here in austin texas we got a baby boy uh we're looking to reach financial independence and retire early through our dividend portfolio here in the next couple of years uh, we've officially already reached lean fire we've sold two rental properties we are still both working our full-time jobs we just actually this is an update this is new um we just barely got no pair so we have an au pair from Austria and she's going to be living with us here for the next year, taking care of her little baby boy. So that, that is actually a pretty big update. Um, but for those of you that follow the channel, I'm still my same old nerdy weird self. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about dividend reinvestment calculators. I don't know what it is. So we got this, this au pair, she's 18 years old. And apparently everything that I enjoy, I'm like a boomer now, I'm old. And so whenever I talk about things, she looks at me and like, like I'm old. And I'm like, well, what do you like? And she's like, well, TikTok. And I'm just like, face palm. Um, I guess, you know, everything that I thought used to be cool is now old and not cool. So now I know how my parents feel when it comes to that. And it, it kind of, it literally, it feels like this, that living in a van down by the river is cool now. I don't know what it is. I, I'm not that old. I just, you know, I'm, I'm 36 years old. I just had my birthday last week. But like, I don't know, times are changing. But yeah, needless to say, it's been a bumpy ride this last couple of months, but I think we're, we're slowly rounding the corner. But I'm sure a lot of you watching the channel, if you're new to investing and you're a new dividend investor and you're experiencing this volatility for the very first time, it probably feels a little like this. This was about me following my heart. It was about me trying to find love for me. And in the end, you know, I get nothing. <laughs> my gosh. Oh, it's good to be back home. All right, cool. All right, so I'm showing you this because I want you to see where I started, right? Because a lot of you following my channel, when you look, when you start down this path of, of financial independence or dividend investing, you usually have the thought in mind, you want to build passive income. You, you really don't necessarily want to work until the day you die. You want to have more flexibility and freedom and time. That's really what it ultimately comes down to. And so when you're first embarking on this path to fire, you are thinking about different ways of how you want to invest. A lot of people go the traditional fire route, right? Where they follow the 4% rule. Some people go the the pure real estate route where they have like 20 rentals. And then, you know, that's, that's their way. For me, I want it to be 100% passive. Dividend investing is purely 100% passive and I love it. So here on the left, this is where I started out. I, there was a lot of learnings. I didn't fully know what I was doing and I'm very candid. I've been investing for over 15 years. I'm not that old, I'm what, 36. Four of those 15 years have been fully dedicated to dividend investing, four of the last 15. So I don't have decades and decades of experience. So a lot of this, I didn't study this in school. Where should I have learned this, right? None of my friends or really anybody that I knew was into this. And so what did I do? I went on YouTube, I went on Google and I researched it probably, probably like a lot of you are right now. And so this is how I got started. And I felt for me, it was better to just start 
than to and to mess up along the way than to have everything perfect and be totally OCD and not start at all. And so in the beginning of my path towards this fire journey, whatever the heck you want to call it, it was a bumpy ride. But now I can thankfully look back and say, you know what, I am in a much better place today. And my stress, because let's be honest, there's stress in everything that we do. My stress is so much lower. My anxiety in terms of is this going to work or not? Now, don't don't go too crazy with, you know, anxiety. That's a really tough word. I was never really, really anxious. But like, you know, you have that FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I did have that up until I understood two things. I understood my time horizon and how math works. Pretty basic stuff, right? And so the time horizon, that's why I talk about it so much on my channel. You have to know what your time horizon is. And then what you do is you just make the numbers work in your benefit, in your favor. Okay, now I'm going to stop there. I could talk about this for an entire hour. I'm going to leave a link in the description. There's a video called The Simple Path, The Simple Math to uh, Retiring Early. There's a link in the description. If you want to watch and learn more about what I just described, there's a link in the description. You can check out that video. I made that video, I think a year ago or so. I think it's pretty good and it's relevant to that topic. But for the remainder of this video, I want to just walk through some different scenarios and walk you through how I use the dividend reinvestment calculator here. Okay, what you're looking at here is the dividend reinvestment calculator spreadsheet here on Google, uh, G, uh, Google or Excel or whatever you want to call it. This is a free sheet. What you can do is there's a link in the pinned comment and in the description below. You can use this link and you can access this file for free. I don't charge anything. I don't got a Patreon. You don't have to pay me. You can use it for free. All that you have to update are the fields in yellow, okay? And so if you want to pause the video, you can follow along with me or you can do it on your own time however you want. I'm not going to go into super detail in terms of how all of this works. You can watch that other video that I just you know, mention if you want to learn more about how the calculator works. But I do show notes here on how you can do it, how you can access the calculator, you know, where you can get the numbers. And if you want to make a copy, this is how you make a copy. Go over to file and then go and click make copy. And then you're going to need to save a copy. You won't be able to edit this version. Okay. So you have to make a copy to edit. Now, here's the tricky thing. If you just have one investment, one ETF, it is super easy to calculate these numbers and to get you know, your growth rates, to get your current yield and to project the future. I would guess the majority, if not 90% of you watching this video are in a similar situation like me where you have a portfolio focus where you're not just investing into one company, one ETF, but you have a portfolio of, of investments. Like for example, this, you have a handful of different companies. And, and if you wanna use the dividend calculator, you want to use the weighted average. Now, half of you or a third of you are gonna know what that means and the other third or two thirds are gonna be like, what the heck did, this, did you just say? A weighted average is based off of the weighting in your portfolio, each individual investment has a different yield, has a different growth rate, all of those things. And if you want this to be accurate, you have to have the weighted average for your portfolio. And so you might be thinking to yourself, Jake, well, how the heck do I do that? Well, let me show you how you can do this. Okay, so the way that I do it, I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. I'm sure there's a website out there that does this that I don't know about. Let me show you how I do it. There's a fast way and a slow way. The fast way is if you upload your portfolio in Seeking Alpha and it will show you all of your holdings in here. And then what you can do is you can export it and I can show you that way. That's the fast way. If you don't have your portfolio already in Seeking Alpha, you can manually do this with Excel and it'll probably take you an hour or maybe longer, depending on how many holdings you have. This took me literally like less than five minutes and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Once you get your portfolio set up, I can walk you through and I can show you how you can get your weighted average of your portfolio. But this is really important if you really want to have reliable, accurate data that you're working off of. So that's why this is important. And when it comes to the, the free version in Seeking Alpha, you can add uh, portfolios in a free version. I think there's a limit to how many portfolios you can have. And there's a limit in terms of what, what you can view. I'm almost positive in the free version, you can access everything that I just talked about. But if you do want to use the premium version, 
There's a link in the description below. You'll get 50% off. You will not get a better price for Seeking Alpha Premium. I've negotiated and worked with the uh, the, the marketing team at Seeking Alpha, and uh, I've asked them to give me the very best price for anybody watching my channel. If you use my link, you'll get the you'll get 50% off, and I do benefit from it. So I do get a small. Uh, thank you from them if you use my link. So no pressure, but if you wanna use it, it's down there below. You won't get a better price for Seeking Alpha Premium. Once you have your portfolio added into uh, Seeking Alpha, what you can do is you can export it. And when you export it, it's gonna look a little like this, okay? So you'll export it, um, and what you'll do is you'll have different tabs down here. You can see this, tabs, dividends. And what you wanna do is you'll wanna look at this right here, the four year av average yield. Now, this is, this is important, so I'm making an assumption that the majority of people are dollar cost averaging. So if you're dollar cost averaging in, into your portfolio, you don't wanna take the current yield. You wanna take the four year average because we're dealing with assumptions here. We don't have a crystal ball, so this is the most accurate way to do it if you're dollar cost averaging. If you just invested a million dollars in your portfolio, then yeah, use this. But for every, all other peasants out there like myself who have a job, this is what you're gonna take <laughs> and you're gonna dollar cost average and this is the number you're gonna look at. So because I have two portfolios, right? I have my cash flow and I have my real estate portfolio. This is, I, I copied them and I made one file here. Okay, so this is, let me see if I can show you this. I hope that you're following along because I think there's a lot, maybe not so much. Um, let me pull this over here because this is what we're gonna show you. Okay, cool. So this is what I want you to, this is how you follow along. All right, once you have this exported in Excel, these are the things that you're gonna look at. You wanna take your weighted average. So this is what we're looking at here is the, uh, no, excuse me, four year average yield. And then we're going to add an additional column called weighting. And this is the weighting that the investment has in your overall portfolio, right? So for example, I have American Tower, DLR, EXR, they equal one and a half percent each. I have a few ETFs in here, QLD, RYLD, SCHD, they equal 7.5%, okay, you follow me? This right here has to equal 100%. It equals 100%. You see that down here, sum 100%. Then what we're gonna do is we wanna gather the weighted average of the CAGR, the dividend CAGR, CAGR stands for Compounding Annual Growth Rate, and the dividend based off of the weighting, okay? So my dividend portfolio based off of the four-year average, so if I'm dollar cost averaging into my portfolio, I can assume just under a 5% dividend yield, okay? Over the lifetime of my portfolio, give or take, plus or minus, this is what I can reasonably, and that's the word I want you to remember, reasonably expect. My CAGR is 6%. So that means each year, my dividend income should increase by 6%. That's me not having to work. That's not me having to do anything else. I am getting a 6% increase every single year. Some years I'll beat inflation. <laughs> Some years I won't. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So these numbers are important when you're calculating or using the dividend calculator, and you'll see that in a moment here. All right, now that we have our dividend CAGR and our dividend yield for our weighted portfolio average here, so we have that base off of the portfolio, now we're gonna look at the fields in yellow, and I'm gonna walk you through how you can do this. Okay, so for your dividend yield, we're gonna use 4.85, that's what my you know, what I should assume, right, that my portfolio will be yielding. Unless I make any changes in the future, this is what I could reasonably expect, uh, plus or minus, right? The dividend growth is 6%, right? That's the dividend CAGR, the compounding annual growth rate. Now, when it comes to the capital appreciation, this is a little bit trickier. I don't have a straight black and white answer for this. You have to use your best guess. And I like being conservative when I when I talk about this because it's important because there's really no clear way to project this. Um, so when you are looking at this, it depends on the growth of your portfolio. So for example, if you're invested primarily in growth, this will be higher. If you're invested more towards value and income like I am, this will be lower. But here, let me show you this really quick. This is the Vanguard portfolio allocation model. You can take a look at this, just Google this and you'll, you'll find this. You can see what the expected returns or 
the, excuse me, the historical returns have been based off of uh, portfolio allocations. So for example, we're gonna go down here for portfolios that have been 100% in stocks, the average return has been about 12%. My portfolio is more skewed towards value, so I'm going to assume anywhere from an eight or a 9% return for my portfolio. Um, as a total return. But once again, you gotta use your own. And so that's that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm using, with my portfolio, a 4% here. All right, and the last thing you have to do is enter in the initial investment and the annual deposit. Now this can be different for any, everyone. So let's say, you know, let's just go off $100,000 and let's say somebody's investing $3,000 a month and with these, these metrics here. Like this is just an example. What you'll notice is you can see here the numbers as they were pertain to the portfolio value, right? Over, if you were to do this with your portfolio, like let's say you had $100,000, you invested 3,000 a month, and you had my portfolio, for example, within 30 years, you would be getting over $700,000 in dividend income. It's kind of crazy to even imagine that. My brain can't comprehend that. Um, this is what everybody talks about with the dividend snowball. You know, snowballs get bigger and bigger over time. With my small brain, it makes it, di it's difficult for me to comprehend this, but just simply over a 30 year time period with reinvesting the dividend, this is not factoring in, infl in inflation or taxes. This is just portfolio value. This is how your portfolio would look, and this is in terms of the dividend income. So how long would it take you to get 100,000? After 16 years, you get over 100,000. How long would it take you to get 200,000? Just what, five years later, you have 200,000, and then what about 3,000? Just uh, what, two or three years more? So that snowball effect, this is, this is the snowball everybody. So this is really interesting. Now, a couple, I want to do a, a few more examples, and then I want to show a few different use cases that everyone could use, because everyone is in a different scenario, right? I speak with people that are in their 50s and 60s that have the money today to invest. I speak with 20-year-olds who have, you know, $5 in their, in their bank account, and they're just getting started. And then I have people like me who are kind of in the middle. So I'm going to touch on all those different scenarios and how you can use this calculator to that advantage, right? So to your advantage, excuse me. So let's use another example. Let's say, for example, you had 500,000 today, and let's say you were investing, I don't know, 5,000 a month. <laughs> let's see if this is right here. Oops, do, 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 60,000. Okay, uh, I'm horrible at math. I got to make sure I get it right. All right, so 500,000, 60,000, we're gonna use, now let's use a different scenario here. Let's say, for example, you wanted to focus more on growth. Let's say you had a 10% capital appreciation, 10% dividend growth, and let's say you had a 2% dividend yield. All right, now this is where big numbers really start to hurt my brain, but this is how, how it would be set up where if this is your portfolio setup where you're focused, this is kind of like on the S&P 500, but with this, after 30 years, you're gonna have just under $30 million, unbelievable, but you're gonna have less in dividends because the dividend yield, this is a portfolio focused more on the total return than just focused on the dividend, right? And so in this scenario, you're gonna have less in dividend income, but you're gonna have a significantly larger portfolio. And now, a lot of people may like this because then they have more flexibility. I mean, you can do a lot with $28 million compared to, you know, what, $9 million we had before, right? So that's why a lot of new dividend investors, you have to not lose sight of the total return. That's why the highest dividend yield doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best investment, okay? And a lot of dividend investing haters, like people, contrarians, people that hate dividend investing, this is why they don't like it, is because you're, you're pigeonholing yourself in one part of the market and you're foregoing a lot of the growth just for that sexy dividend, okay? So make sure that you understand this. And this is what I love about uh, tax advantage accounts like Roth accounts or 401k Roth accounts. 
you may want to have a larger portfolio value, a smaller dividend, and then you'll have more options, right? You could buy a house. You could sell half of your holdings and then buy higher dividend stocks at that point in time. Like there's so many things that you can do. And this is why this calculator is so impactful is it helps you make the decision for you, right? And one thing that you have to remember all along this way, you're paying taxes if it's in a taxable account. If it's not, then that's that doesn't matter. So that's something that you really, really want to be aware of. OK, now let me use another scenario. Now, let's assume that you're like me and my, my wife and I, where we have. So, for example, you're still working, but, you know, within the next couple of years, you're planning on living off of your dividend portfolio. OK, so let's say, for example, you are 22 years old and your goal is to retire by 32. OK, well, what you can do is you can use this calculator. This is in the bottom here. You can see living off your portfolio in the future. What this is looking at is in the future, you're no longer going to be reinvesting your stock, uh, reinvesting your portfolio, and you're no longer going to be funding your portfolio. But the portfolio is going to still grow organically. So you're no longer reinvesting the dividends and you're no longer adding additional shares, this is this is the uh, the calculator that you'll use for this. This is focused on 10 years. If you have 15 years, all you have to do is update column D here. If you have 20 years, this is the column that you'll have to update and you can play around with the uh, this this section right here. So you'll need to update this. But let's use this scenario here. This is more likely for somebody that has already some money invested. In, in most cases, not always, but in a lot of cases, this scenario is maybe somebody that has $100,000, $200,000. Maybe let's do $100,000. And let's say this is somebody that is maybe making good money. They have a high savings rate where they're investing more money. And let's say, for example, they're investing $2,000 a month. Now, let's say, for example, they're investing into... Uh, let's say they're investing into an ETF like SCHD. The ETF from, you know, from Schwab, the SCHD ETF, you're going to get approximately, approximately this. Um, let's do, let's do 11. Give or, give or take. So take everything with a grain of salt. You can look at the numbers afterwards, but approximately this is an example of what you could look at. Uh, if you're investing in SCHD, and you're investing for 10 years, reinvesting the dividends, but then you're no longer reinvesting the dividend, no longer funding the portfolio, but you're letting the portfolio sit and continue to grow over time. This is what you could reasonably expect. Within 30 years, you'd have over a $4 million portfolio. And in 30 years, you'd have over two and a quarter, $225,000 in annual dividends. Not too shabby. Right. But the thing that you have to understand is this is in 30 years. What is it going to look like, you know, five years, 10 years? So in this scenario, um, maybe I can do this. Maybe this is easier to visualize it. Let's do this. Um, let's do this. OK, pulling it over here. OK, so what you can see is in five years, you're only going to have 11,000 a year in dividends. You're probably not going to be able to live off of that in 10 years. Once this is how long you're investing, right? And then you're going to stop. You're going to have $28,000. Now, most people are not in the US are not going to be able to survive on $28,000. But here's there's a couple things that I want to make a point on. The main point is the portfolio is still growing. You see that it's growing and it grows exponentially more over time. But here's the thing when it comes to your time horizon. Let's say, OK, you have a goal of 10 years. You're like, OK. I want to do it, Jake, 10 years. I'm not working a day longer. Well, something's got to give. Something's got to change. What you can do is you can say, okay, well, I need to earn more. I need to make more money and I need to invest more. So we got to invest more. Okay. Assuming that you still want to keep SCHD, let's say, okay, let's invest more. All right. So what, what does that change? In 10 years, $36,000. Damn, I'm not going to be able to live off of uh, $37,000. Okay. Well, maybe, you know, you need to, uh, I, I don't know. Let's say, let's do this 60,000. Just another example. After 10 years, $53,000. All 
okay, not too bad. Um, not everyone's going to be able to invest $60,000. Most people don't even make $60,000, you know, that they're able to invest. Like that's, that's not going to be feasible for everyone. Your time horizon here, it's, it's like a lever. There's different levers that you have to pull. And depending on your individual time horizon, you have the flexibility. Where are you going to pull those levers? Are you going to extend your time horizon? to instead of 10 years to 13 years, 15 years? Or are you gonna cut your expenses and invest more? Or are you going to invest maybe a little bit more conservative or more aggressive? Or are you going to have to, you know, what, what levers are you gonna pull? And so that's really, really important. And I would say the majority of people watching this video and following my channel, this is where the majority of you are at. And I was just like that. When I was first figuring this all out, this is what caused me to have the most stress because I didn't know which levers to pull. And then once I started playing around with this, I understood, oh, I can do that. Oh, I have to move that, I can do that, I can adjust that. And that's why investing, it, it can be frustrating and intimidating because you don't necessarily know what levers are available to you and know which ones to pull. So I hope that that really, really helps. Now. Let's take a look at the last scenario here. Let's say you're 35 years old, you're 60 years old, you're 70, you're 20, you're 18, who knows? And you have all the money that you need today. Let's say you got an inheritance. Let's say that you sold a business. Let's say you sold a rental property. Let's say you have a leprechaun <laughs> and just drop some money in your, your backyard or whatever you are Instagram famous and you make a million dollars. Let's see, you have, let's let's go with $2 million because I think with inflation and with costs rising, I think the $2 million portfolio is probably the most conservative when it comes to, comes to this. So let's take a look at that example again. Let me do the numbers here, 9, 11, and 3, 9, 11, and 3.3. This is the example of SEHD. If you were to invest into SEHD and you had $2 million, let's say, for example, uh, you had your Roth IRA, you had $2 million, you sold everything, and you said, okay, Jake, I'm going to buy SEHD today. Don't, don't mind the numbers here. They're not 100% percent accurate. I haven't looked at them. But let's say you invest into something similar to SHD with these numbers. This is what your portfolio is going to do over that time period. If you never reinvested a share and you never invested a single dollar more, you could reasonably assume with an investment like SHD that after 30 years, your portfolio value will be over $24 million and you'll be receiving over $1.3 million a year in dividends. Isn't that insane? Let's pull this over here and let's take a look at it. This is what that would look like. Your first year, you're getting $66,000. In your fifth year, you're getting $100,000. In your 10th year, you're getting over 168,000. In your 15th year, 284, 20 years, almost a half a million dollars. And then it goes, goes from there. Once again, my small peanut brain can't comprehend this, these big numbers. Let's say for example, you had uh, 1.5, so you had a, a $1.5 million. $1.5 million, this is what it's gonna look like. Five years, 75,000, 10 years, 126, 20, 356. After 30 years, you'd have a million dollars. So this is really the power of, of compounding and the miracle of compound interest, but this is what's so powerful. These are the three different scenarios, right? Living off of your portfolio today, living off of your portfolio in the future by a specific date, but then the portfolio still grows. And then the more traditional, growing your dividend portfolio from scratch, this is like you're just barely starting out, okay? This right here, I would encourage the majority of you to start playing with this. Start thinking with this with your, um, with your time horizon. If you have a 20 year time horizon, update column D here to reflect 20 years and then run that simulation. And then if you don't have the right, the right numbers that you, need, that you perceive that you need based off of your perceived future expenses, then play with the levers. Pull the levers here up in the top and figure out what you need to do. Do you need to extend your time horizon? Or I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of you that are watching this video and are gonna realize, oh wow, I can actually retire much sooner than I thought. And so 
that's that's what's that's always the best thing. That's what happened with my wife and I. This is the main thing. You're you're figuring out these levers. You're figuring out which levers you need to pull, and then you just make the numbers work in your to your advantage. That's really what it ultimately comes down to. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that this really cleared up a lot of the questions that, that you may have had when it comes to calculating your future returns. Do bear in mind that nobody has a crystal ball. Historical returns that we're looking at here are never a guarantee of future returns. I always like to be a little bit conservative when running the numbers, just so that I have that margin of safety. But that's just me. Hopefully you got something out of it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch everybody in next week's video. You know what? I think we're gonna be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.